Uh, welcome to another one of our Facebook Lives. We're gonna give everyone a few seconds to hop on so that we can go ahead and start our chat. And we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite animals in the whole world, and that is going to be rhinos today. So we're just gonna take a few seconds to let everyone hop on and let you guys get ready. All right, now that we've taken a few moments to let some more people join so that we can learn about rhinos, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Kylie. I am an interpretive specialist here at the Fort Worth Zoo. You might remember me from the hippo live chat that we did a few weeks ago. And today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite animal in the whole world and that are, is the rhino. There are five different species of rhino in the world. But today we're gonna to be chatting about the rhino that lives here at the Fort Worth Zoo, and that is the black rhino. Here is Travis. He is one of our three black rhinos that live here. He is hanging out up close and personal to us right now because he has a couple of his care staff members that are out here that provided him with some really good enrichment. And enrichment is just something that we provide to our animals to help get them up moving around, stay physically active, mentally active, and just having some sort of stimulation in their day to help make sure that they are living a happy and a healthy life here. So the enrichment that they were providing Travis is something that we call browse. And browse is just a nice word for a really large branch with a bunch of leaves on it because black rhinos are browsers. Now that word just means that black rhinos are gonna be out in the African savannas going around and taking leaves off of trees and going around and occasionally eating grass like you do see Travis doing right now. But they are very good at making sure that they are able to get different types of leaves off of the plants and the vegetation that is found in the grasslands in the savannas of Africa. Right now, Travis is enjoying this nice grass, especially on this beautiful day. It is about 73 degrees and sunny here in Fort Worth, Texas, which is perfect weather for a lot of the animals here at the zoo, and including their keepers and the people who work here. We're having a great time. We hope you guys are staying safe and healthy wherever you are and that the weather is nice where you guys are at and where you are tuning into. Now Travis is, like I said, one of three rhinos that live here at the Fort Worth Zoo. He is 24 years old and he is one of two males that live here. So he is in this yard right now while our other two rhinos are in one of the other two yards that we have. So we have three very large rhino yards here at the Fort Worth Zoo that our care staff is able to rotate our animals in to make sure that they are having a rotated schedule which is going to make sure that they are eliciting natural behaviors that they would be doing out in their natural range and rotating between different territories. So you guys might have seen the video that the zoo posted earlier this week of an excited rhino and that is Crockett. He is one of our other two rhinos. He is six years old so he is 18 years younger than Travis so he's gonna be a little bit more active in walking around. That's what that video that you guys saw. So our animals here at the zoo have become used to seeing people, hearing sounds, that sort of thing. And that day, what had happened with myself was I had just been having to walk by, talking, preparing for this Facebook Live, and Crockett got really excited. And that is what happened with that, and that was a good form of enrichment. It was just enrichment that his keepers hadn't planned that day because they do, we provide enrichment to all of our animals here at the zoo and because we like to make sure that they are staying active, they're staying mentally stimulated. We wanna make sure that their day is broken up. And I just happened to be an extra form of enrichment for Crockett that day. And I'm super thankful for our Africa, African Savannah keepers here at the zoo who take care of these guys because like I said at the beginning, they're my favorite animal. I love to talk about them. I love that we have them here for people to see and to learn about because they are an endangered animal. So black rhinos like Travis are critically endangered, which just means that their populations are not where they necessarily need to be. The good news is their populations are rising very slowly, which is super important. 
And that is what we wanna make sure that we are doing. So here at the Fort Worth Zoo, we actually partner with the International Rhino Foundation, which is a conservation organization that helps protect all five different species of rhinos uh, out in their natural range, whether it is promoting different ways that we are able to help rhinos out, um, or if it's putting anti-poaching for forces on the grounds in Africa and in Asia, it's those types of things. So whenever you guys are able to come back to the zoo, you will be supporting animals as well. So we're hopeful to get back open once everything is nice and safe for you guys so that we are able to help out these animals out in their natural range. So black rhinos, they are one of the two different species of rhinos found on the continent of Africa. The other species of rhino that is found on the continent of Africa is going to be the white rhino. So there are white rhinos and there are black rhinos. So black rhinos, like Travis, have a prehensile lip and that prehensile lip is able to reach up and grab the different types of leaves and the branches off of the trees like we were talking about a little bit ago when he was eating the grass and eating the browse. Whereas the white rhinos have a wide flat lip and that lip is made specifically so that they are able to eat the different types of grasses and they are going to be primarily just grazers. So what had happened when the species was discovered and people were learning more about them is that when English settlers went to Africa and were learning the different names of these animals, uh, the word was misinterpreted from wide to white. So that wide flat lip is what they were first identified for and then when people were coming in and translating it, it became translated to white. So that's where the term white and black rhino came from. But their coloration, like I said, is not their differences. It is going to be that prehensile lip and then a couple other behavioral differences and definitely size differences. White rhinos are the largest rhino species. At, they can get up to around 6,000 pounds. But then the black rhino, they are going to be the second smallest species of rhino. They can get up to around 3,000 pounds at the largest, but typically they range somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 pounds. Travis out there, he weighs around 2,800 pounds. His keeper Maggie is out here and she just told me that. So that's a really accurate weight and we're thankful that she was able to give us that information so I could tell you guys. I think it's super important for you guys to be able to know a lot about our, our animals because I think it helps you care about them so you know those specific details. So for those that might just be joining us, we are out here with, Cro or not Crockett, that's one of our other rhinos. We're out here with Travis. He's 24 years old. He's one of our three black rhinos that lives here. He's making his way back around. And now you guys are gonna be able to see that prehensile lip a little bit closer now that he is walking back this way. You can see it kind of makes a pointed V shape and that is going to be used to be able to grab the leaves like I mentioned earlier. So rhinos, they have a really poor sense of vision and they rely heavily on their other senses, which is going to be their hearing. You can see Travis is moving his ears back and forth as we are talking since he came back around this way. And so he's just listening to make sure that everything is safe for him to continue moving around his habitat and maybe go wallow in some mud some more. So we were talking a few seconds ago about the coloration of rhinos and Travis, he does have a pretty dark coloration right now, and that is because before we started this video, he was actually wallowing in some mud. Rhino skin is very sensitive to the sun and to insects biting them. So what they do to help protect their skin and to make sure that they aren't going to be getting sunburnt is that they actually go and they wallow in the mud. 
and the mud is going to act kind of like a sunscreen. It's going to protect them. It's going to keep it moisturized. And it is also going to make sure that they have kind of a layer on their skin and the insects aren't going to be biting them as much. They're not going to be irritated in that way. Now that Travis is coming back over this way, we can actually talk a little bit about what makes a rhino super, super unique. And that it's going to be that horn on their face. So rhinos have a horn on their face to make sure that they are able to protect themselves from different predators. Uh, they also have to, if they are a male rhino, they might need to protect themselves of their territory or maybe of a female that they might be coming into contact with. They just use it for protection in general. And that rhino horn is actually made out of keratin. And keratin is something that, something on our body is actually made out of. So rhino horn and the keratin is exactly like our fingernails and our hair. So human fingernails and human hair is made out of keratin, just like rhino horn is. And all three of our rhinos have different shaped horns and different grooming preferences. So rhinos, they have to groom their horn themselves. So they like to rub on logs, maybe on rocks, maybe on the grass as well. And it's going to file that horn down and give it a different shape. It's all just dependent on the rhino themselves as to how much grooming they're going to be doing and what shape their horn is going to be taking. So when Travis walks back around, you'll be able to see his front horn is pretty long and pointed forward. And his horns look a little bit different than our other two rhinos. So that just means he's gonna be grooming it differently. Now, one of our rhinos, Crockett, we have noticed that his rhino horn is actually starting to fray a little bit, which is normal. It happens because rhino horn is compacted hair. It just means that it's compressed. And if it's not groomed, all of that, that we can share with you guys in the comments. So you are able to see that so you can see exactly what rhino horn is made out of and just see that it's essentially a pretty large fingernail that they have to groom themselves. Now our female rhino, her name is Mtoto and we call her Tote for short. She has a really, really long pointed horn. I'm sure if you guys are members of the Fort Worth Zoo or if you've ever visited the Fort Worth Zoo, you have seen a rhino with a really long, impressive horn and that's going to be our female tote. And now when you come back to the zoo, you'll be able to identify them because all three of their horns look drastically different. And that's just based on the individual and how much they want to groom and how much they, time they want to spend on grooming that horn. It's just all their preference preference just like it's our preference of how long we want our hair to grow or how short we want our hair to grow essentially the same thing so you guys might be wondering if you did see the video of crockett running around his yard notice that this is the same yard that crockett was in and that's actually something really important that i wanted to talk about and i'm glad that travis is out in this yard today so that we could highlight it so here at the Fort Worth Zoo, we have three different rhino yards that we are able to rotate our rhinos in to help elicit natural behavior like they would be out in the wild, patrolling different parts of the African, African savanna and finding different territories and occasionally finding maybe a female for breeding purposes. So today, Travis is out in this yard because Crockett has been out in this yard. So it was just time for the rhinos to do a little bit of a switch, which is going to, like I said, elicit those natural behaviors. And the keepers are the ones who decide when that happens. And they just monitor the rhinos behaviors to see maybe we should switch it up for them. And it's a really good form of enrichment on top of the items that we give them, like the brows that you might've seen at the beginning of the video if you've been watching the whole time. So moving them around is really great enrichment for them. Occasionally, our two males will spend time with our female, uh, not together, they'll be one-on-one -on -one with her, just to, like I said, elicit that natural behavior of a male coming across a female out in their natural range. Now, black rhinos, like I talked about, are critically endangered, and so there is something called the SSP in place for them. So the SSP is the Species Survival Plan. And in AZA zoos in the United States, there is a board of people that monitor the genetics of individual animals and pairs them together to make sure that we are able to have a genetically variable breeding population in zoos in case these animals ever did go extinct out in their natural range. 
The good news about this though is that we also partner with conservation organizations like I mentioned the International Rhino Foundation that is helping out these animals out in their natural range while also making sure that we have these animals here who are great ambassadors for their species out in the wild. I mentioned earlier that there are five different species of rhino which actually actually leads me to my activity that I would like to do with you guys. So we have just one species of rhino here today, which is a black rhino. You can see this is Travis for those that might just be joining us. But like I mentioned, there are five different species of rhino. So the activity that I want you guys to do today is going to be coming across for your creative minds, all of those kids out there that need to do something fun with their time right now. I want you guys to draw a rhino, color a picture of a rhino of some sort, and then I want you guys to share it on your social media. And like I said at the beginning, rhinos are my favorite. I'm super passionate about rhino conservation. I want us to be able to help rhinos out as much as we possibly can. And right now during quarantine and social distancing, the best way to do that is by posting guardians and older siblings out there I want you guys to get your young ones involved in this activity and have them draw a rhino or color a rhino and then have their favorite rhino fact with that drawing and then share it to our social media I know I would love to see little drawings of rhinos I'm sure they're uh, Travis's care staff would probably love to see it we all need a little bit of happiness in our lives right now and I know that would be super fun but I can't ask you guys to do an activity and then me not myself. So, I know here are the five different species of rhino. We've got the Sumatran rhino, the black rhino, the Javan rhino, the greater one horn rhino, and the white rhino. And I drew them in order from size, from smallest to largest. So we're gonna start with the Sumatran rhino. The Sumatran rhino is the smallest rhino. They can range anywhere from 1,300 pounds to 2,000 pounds. And in my drawing, you can see there's little fuzzies on them. And that's because Sumatran rhinos are the only rhino species. it can get a little bit bigger which is why they are rated a little bit bigger on the scale when you're coming to size so you might see these two these are going to be thick at a time in water so they need to be able to have their head out of the water the reason they spend a lot of time in water is to help protect their skin from the really harsh insects that can be found in the rainforests they only have one horn which is different than the black rhino and the sumatran rhino but it is similar to the greater one horn rhino. Greater one horn rhinos are going to be the next rhino on the list. They can get uh, a lot bigger than the Javan rhinos.
Maggie right here. If there are any questions that I can't answer, and we're really grateful that she came out today. Is there any questions? What does their skin feel like? That's a great question that Maggie would probably be able to answer a little bit better since I just love these guys. I just get to talk about them, but she works with them. Hi, I'm Maggie. I'm one of the rhino keepers here in African Savannah. So rhinos typically um, feel dirty because they, <laughs> they uh, wallow so much to protect their skin. Um, but their skin is very thick, hair is on it. Um, really the only time we're in contact with our, our rhinos is for their conditioning for their medical training. What do rhinos eat? Well, they are herbivores um, throughout all, all the species. Um, the black rhino in particular is a browser, which means they like woody plants. They'll eat the entire shrub if you let them. Yeah. Um, tree branches are a favorite of Travis's, um, but they will also eat the savanna grasses or here the grasses we plant in the yard. <laughs> um, they also like some fruits and vegetables, which we use for their training purposes. What are their favorite foods? Uh, Travis? Um, for a treat really likes an apple. And how much can he eat in a day? Uh, a pea is about 50 pounds of food a day. Um, a, wild, a wild rhino could eat up to 75 pounds of, of food a day. Kylie, talk about what we can do at home to help rhinos. Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the biggest things that you are able to do for rhinos is just to spread awareness about them, which is why with these pictures that I encourage you guys to draw is to post them on your social media with the hashtag Fort Worth Zoo or hashtag IRF, which is the International Rhino Foundation. That is going to be super helpful with these guys. We always can, the rhino conservation can always use donations of any sort. You can find all of that information on our website, on the International Rhino Foundation's website because it's really important since we're stuck here in social distancing and quarantine and we're not able to go anywhere to utilize social media to an extent to help protect our animals, to help raise awareness about them. Not everyone knows about the Sumatran rhino and the Javan rhino. They are the most critically endangered large mammal in the world. There are less than a hundred of both of those species of rhino. So it's always super important to just be aware watch our live videos that we're doing here and just support your local zoo that's also going to be super helpful because we are working for conservation because we love these animals we want to conserve them all zookeepers want that but it's important for people who aren't zookeepers to want that as well are rhinos related to any other animal that's a great question that we were actually talking about right before we started this so rhinos are what we call an odd toed ungulate. And an ungulate is an animal that has a hoof. So these guys have three toes, which makes them have the odd toed. But then the other animals, if you are thinking about an animal that has a hoof, you probably are super familiar with another odd toed ungulate and that's a horse. So horses are also in the ungulate um, classification and then tapers are also in the ungulate classification or uh, odd toed ungulate classification. What does rhinoceros mean? What does rhinoceros mean? So if I'm remembering correctly or if Maggie knows for sure, it looks like she does. I have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure. So I want her to answer it. Rhinoceros means nose horn. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Say it again. Nose horn. So mm -hmm. rhino for nose and ceros for horn. Yeah. That's what I thought, but I knew she would know. <laughs> So last question, how fast can a rhino run? That's a great question. So believe it or not, even though these guys are a really big animal and they might not seem super agile, they can go about 30 to 35 miles an hour um, when they want to. So it just really depends on if they need to go that speed. Uh, so most of the time when they're accomplishing that speed, it's because something has startled them. Like I mentioned before, they have really poor eyesight. So they rely on other senses like their hearing and their sense of smell to really make sure that they are safe. So if something startles them, they are just probably gonna run away really quickly. They're really analyzing the situation because their eyesight is poor. And if they get close to something and they're not really able to tell what it is before uh, it gets too close, the best option for them is to just run. So it's around 30 to 35 miles per hour whenever they are trying to decide what they need to do. But that was a great question. 
So that was our last question and we're so happy that you guys came out today. Uh, and we're so thankful that you guys have been tuning into our Facebook Lives. Thank you guys so much and tune in next week to our zoo social media to see what we will be doing next. And I hope you guys are staying staying safe, enjoying beautiful weather, or staying inside if it's not so great wherever you might be. And thanks for tuning in, and I hope to hear from you guys soon with your rhino pictures.